how a small town girl from Maine grew a multi six figure coaching business in under 18 months. Today on Brand Tales. Brand Tales, all your brand tales. Listen to how the greatest brands came to be. Hey there, and welcome to Brand Tales. This is your host, Holly Chantal, the founder of The Land of Brand, and this is episode one of the Brand Tales podcast. And I would just like to take a moment to share with you what it is we're going to be doing over the next couple of weeks in this podcast. Basically, the premise of the show is that we are interviewing six and seven figure entrepreneurs and talking about the stories behind their brands. So how they got started, what it is that they struggle with and what advice they might give themselves if they were to start all over again. Those are the kinds of questions we're going to be asking and I'm going to be getting the best strategies for you in your own coaching business so that you can build a truly unique brand that allows you to reach the people that you're meant to serve and share your passion with the world. And today we're going to be talking about my story since this is the first episode. So why did I start my coaching business? This is a question that I get all the time. And my coaching business was actually the third business that I've had and all of them have been successful. I started my first when I was 19. I was raising and selling exotic uh, exotic birds, so macaws, cockatoos, great African greys, and my background is actually in animal science. My second business was uh, home parties. I was in a direct sales business and this is really where I became aware of coaching. I was at a conference and I saw a coach speaking. Uh, Her name was Marsha Weeder, you may have heard of her, and she was a dream coach. And I left that room feeling so inspired that I could achieve my dreams and that all of the naysayers were wrong. And I decided in that moment that my dream was to coach. I wanted to help other people create lives that were amazing and that were unlimited and that were ultimately the expression of their passion. So that in that moment where I felt so inspired, I just wanted to create that for other people. Does that necessarily mean that it was easy to do? Absolutely not. I spent the next two years saving up for uh, to be able to go to coaching school and um, also just studying the world of coaching, studying how to run that type of business. Because like I said, I had run businesses before, but they were a completely different model. And they came with a set of instructions for what you were supposed to do and how you were supposed to market. And with the coaching business, it was totally new to me. So what was my biggest challenge? Well, really getting the foundational pieces in place. After I had saved for two years and done all of that studying, I was lucky enough to meet Michael Port again at a conference for that same company. And we really hit it off and he just happened to be starting up his own coach certification program in the Book Yourself Solid system, which you may have heard of. It's a, a best-selling book and it's, fan, it's a fantastic marketing system for service professionals that want to be very, very authentic in their businesses. And I just, I, I loved what it was he was teaching. A lot of it was things that I was already doing in my direct sales business, so it really, really resonated and I decided to go ahead and train with him. And you would think that since I was being certified in a marketing system and how to coach people to build their businesses, that it would have been easy for me. Not the case, because oftentimes it is easier to do for others than it is to do for yourself. So I still had the challenge of figuring out my business, and that was probably the hardest part. Who was it that I was going to serve? What was it that I was going to specialize in offering them? Those were the two questions that plagued me for about a year and a half. And I had zero clients because I just was stuck in the stop start cycle. I would, I would pick a target market and I'd work on it for a couple, a couple months or maybe even just a couple weeks because I wasn't getting traction or I just wasn't feeling passionate about it. And it wasn't until all of that fell into place and I stopped making decisions based on what I thought I should 
be doing, who I thought had the most money and was going to be able to afford me, who I thought would be the easiest to sell to, and instead pursued what I was really passionate about, which was working for coaches. I fell in love with that coach when I was in, in that moment when I first decided I wanted to start this business. And I realized that coaches, they are really passionate people and they, they have that same spark that I had and I really wanted to help them. So once I decided that I was going to work with coaches and I decided that I would specialize in um, helping them with their websites and online marketing because that's really what had made me so successful in my previous businesses, once I decided what that specialty was going to be and who it was for, everything fell into place after that. I branded myself as Holly Chantel, the website growth specialist, and I began helping coaches. And within two months, I was booked solid. So obviously, hollychantel.com is not the land of brand. So how did, how did I, that name come about? That's another really common question I get. So the land of brand is actually kind of a funny story. Um, I was still working with Michael Port. He was actually my mentor for, uh, I think about four years. I worked pretty closely with him and, um, we were working on this, this program that I had created, um, because after, actually I should back up a little bit. So after working with, uh, coaches on their websites, what I found was that when they came to me, they didn't really know what it was they wanted on their websites. Um, so, you know, they'd hire me to do a design for them and to put together an online marketing strategy, but they didn't really know what they wanted. They didn't really know how to describe who it was they were serving or how to present their, their, uh, products and programs on, on the web or what even their opt-in offer was going to be. So I was finding that I was actually doing a lot of consulting and a lot of coaching around that. And what I didn't realize at the time was that was really branding and, I was helping people define what it was that made them unique, why their clients should hire them, and how to put words to their message that made it very tangible and easy to understand and be perceived as valuable and worth buying. So once I realized that that was basically what branding was, I created a, a program around my system. Um, because as I was working with these clients, I was developing all, all these worksheets and this, this really step-by-step -step system that I was taking them through in order to create their website. And so I put this into a, a I was going to do a group program and I was going to call it, uh, I think it was like four weeks to a six figure brand or, or something like that. And so on one of my coaching calls, I, I mentioned that to Michael and he basically just shot the name down. He said, you know, if you're going to be a branding expert, then you need to come up with something a little more creative because that's something that everyone's heard before. And he was so right on and it was just exactly what I needed to hear in that moment. So we started playing like, okay, well, if I'm going to be a branding expert and I'm going to sell branding and, and how to be unique, then I need to be unique. So what, what would be like this, just this really fun name or this really fun concept and we were kind of going back and forth with, with my name, Holly, and he, you know, was calling me Holly Pop and saying that I could give lollipops to people. Like, it was just like this big joke that we were, we were uh, creating this kind of fake brand. And what actually came out of that was he started talking, when he was talking about candy, I was like, well, what about Candyland? What if I created this program as a game and um, took all of these steps and put them on a game board? and had it look a lot like Candyland because that was my favorite game as I was growing up. And he's like, yeah, he's like, that, that, would be, that would be so cool. You know, if you can pull it off, that would be something that's totally different and would be a lot of fun for people. So I started calling it Brandyland. And if you do a Google search for Brandyland, a lot of very unflattering things will come up. <laughs> um, and I really didn't want to cater to uh, the, the, you know, brandy as booze kind of market. Um, so we had to put that one, you know, back to the drawing board, but the concept of the game was still there. So we ended up naming that the branding game. And that's a program that I still have today. And, um, my business partner, Matt and I, um, started playing with games for the actual names for the actual company. And he came up with the land of brand and he put together this whole concept of the map being the land of brand and the branding game being your journey through that land. 
So it was just this really kind of kind of fun journey, even coming to that name. And it sounds like it was really complicated, but really happened like just in a couple days. And I remember actually uh, reaching out to Matt and saying, I have this crazy idea. And whenever I say that to him, he's always like, "Uh oh. (laughs) So I told him, I have this crazy idea. What if we created this this brand, this game about branding and called it Brandyland? Um, So that was just kind of, you know, a fun story behind how the name came about. So if you've been following the Landa brand for a while, then you've probably noticed that we actually rebranded recently. And oftentimes when people think of rebranding, they're thinking that you're gonna change your name or your entire concept. And that's really not the case. Um, Sometimes rebranding is nothing more than revisiting revisiting your brand and revisiting the message and who it is that you want to serve and um, kind of taking it to the next level. And that's really what we did this year. So uh, why did we do it? Well, as I just shared the story of the land of brand and um, you know how we, we really got started doing, doing websites and then fell into branding, even when we created the land of brand, we found that, or I have found over the, over the last couple of years that we were still very focused on website design. That was really how we were making our products tangible to our clients. And I was having a very hard time selling branding on its own. And there's a really good lesson in this because if you're finding that you're having a hard time selling the programs that you want to sell to clients, then you probably have uh, you probably have a branding problem because the message that they're getting is not necessarily what it is you're trying to put out there. So even though I was trying to uh, convey this message of how important your brand is and how important it is to really establish why you're different and be consistent in your message and to create this experience for people, I was still selling websites. And so I decided that it was time to really revisit the brand. I had been putting it off for too long. I'd really outgrown the message that was there and it was time to take things to the next level. So what we did was I, I I took what was on the website and I, kind of started started from scratch to a point in that I just I I treated it as a blank slate and thought about who it is that I want to serve and what is it that I'm really passionate about doing like what do I want to do day to day and to be honest websites aren't it we love doing websites we love seeing the the end result but for me the website is really the um it's more of the manifestation or like the physical manifestation of the brand. And what I really enjoy doing is working with my clients to uncover what really makes them awesome. So what are the the talents that they have? What is the, the, that makes them really unique that they may not have even noticed before and is definitely not something that's in their marketing. And then I also love the strategy side of things. So uncovering what what is that sequence that moves someone from landing on your website and becoming uh, interested in you to actually hiring you. And not only that, but how do you make them raving fans that keep hiring you over and over again and end up bringing their friends? So that's why if you go to the website right now, you'll notice that the that's the headline is how to create a brand that uh, where uh, your fans are buying everything you offer and bringing their friends because that's ultimately what I wanted to do. So we took, our programs didn't actually change. We just took those programs and reworked the language around them to be more about this brand and more about what the result is when you create a brand versus what the result is when you just create a website. So that was really the core of the rebrand was just changing that, that language. And of course we did do redo the website because I decided that if I was going to be in the position of an expert in branding versus just a, a website design company um, that I really needed to bring myself to the forefront of the brand. I'd been kind of hiding behind the land of brand name, which I know sounds really, uh, sounds really silly because if you know me, I am all about bringing your personality into your business. That's really the core of our message is who you are and what makes you special and how do you bring your personality into your brand to really connect with people. Yet I was still hiding behind my company name. So I went and I got new headshots um, that were really, really fun. Um, and, and you know, just a, a side secret, we 
this all happened so quickly that I didn't actually have time to hire a photographer and do it right. So I literally went to JCPenney and um, it just had all those pictures taken with a white background. And I told them uh, not to, you know, I didn't want to pose. I just wanted them to keep snapping pictures until we got what I wanted. And we did it in probably about 20 minutes. So, you know, if you're in a pinch, you don't necessarily have to have a really fancy photographer. Could they be better? Absolutely. Will I replace them eventually? Absolutely. Um, that's just kind of a, a side note on, on how you can get pictures of yourself that will really represent your brand, um, even, if, even if you're in a pinch. So anyway, let me back back up to what we were talking about. And um, so we redid the website. Uh, with me as the focal point, as the expert behind the business, and um, you know, re restructured everything to be more about the brand. And this is a good lesson for those of you that are already established in your business that your brand is not necessarily a one and done thing. Um, you don't just create a website and a logo and your message and then you're done because our businesses are based on ourselves and who we are, and we're constantly growing and changing and developing new talents and developing new skills and decide and, and growing with our clients. So your business is going to change and therefore your brand is going to change. So if you're finding that um, you're sending people to your website and you're saying, you know, this, this doesn't really represent what I do anymore or I'm doing so much more than that, um, or people are coming to you for the wrong things based on your website, then it might be time for you to rebrand. You may have outgrown your message and it may be time for you to take things to the next level. And that's exactly what we did this year. So have there been times when my business struggled? Absolutely. And I'm just going to exclude that first 18 months because I don't actually consider myself to be in business during that time. I had a full-time job and I was, um, I was, you know, still at the beginning stages. Um, but even after I hit that six-figure level, um, and even the multi-six-figure level, so I, did, I didn't mention this, but um, when we launched the Land of Brand, we, we were in the multiple six figures by that first year, and uh, things were great. I was getting all of the clients that I wanted to work with. Um, they were great clients, like just amazing people. We were creating, we were creating amazing brands, and it was so much fun. I felt like I was in flow. I was doing exactly what I wanted to. I had quit my job and was doing my business full time. It was it was just a, a great time to 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 be us. And uh, then I got pregnant and had a baby, and thing my whole world was turned completely upside down. Um, not only was my business no longer the priority in my life because I had a new priority. Um, but suddenly my schedule wasn't my own anymore and all of the, all of the planning that I did, um, to, when in preparation for having the baby, uh, could not have prepared me for how it really affected my business. So even though I had all of these systems in place, I had hired help to do my marketing and I, I had, um, you know, prepared my clients and prepared my programs to really be able to support them. Um, it totally threw me for a loop. And uh, suddenly, you know, I had, I had thought, you know, I could work while he was sleeping, doing naps. That is not going to happen, as I'm sure your par parents are, are probably nodding your head that everyone says, you know, sleep when they sleep or, um, you know, put them down for a nap and get work done. And that's just not what happens. Um, so it took me about a year to recover from that. And um, I really, my, the business, the business suffered. I had to cut back on the number of clients I was serving. Um, all of these systems that I had put in place, just they were not, not working because you really can't, at being coming a parent, you just really can't uh, anticipate everything. And um, so about nine months after he was born, I finally uh, found a babysitter that worked out really well and he still sees her now. Um, oh, and I should probably mention that like in the middle of that, we moved, uh, to a different state and bought a house. And so the, that year was a little rough. Um, but once, once I had the right support system in place with a babysitter and was able to, and as of course he got older, cause as if you're a parent, you know, that first year is pretty rough anyway. Um, as he got older and, and, um, 
you know things changed the business was did bounce back and that is is just again just a really good lesson in in knowing that sometimes things are not going to go to plan and sometimes it's not necessarily that your idea is bad or that there's something wrong with your business there could just be something else going on in your life that's going to affect things in ways that you did not anticipate and I will say that now I am a completely different person in the best way possible. And I feel like I'm actually doing even better work now because my way of thinking has changed. Um, I no longer have unlimited time to work on things. I no longer can you know, work late into the, to the evening because I know that I can sleep in in the morning if I need to, to to get things done. I have to make decisions much more quickly. And I've learned to depend on my intuition a lot more. Um, with my own business, and I'm even trusting it with my clients' businesses, which is something that I never, never did before. And so being able to make those decisions quickly has been a um, really a big game changer in my business and the way that I, I work with clients. Um, so just, you know, some lessons to take away from there are things are not always going to go as anticipated. Uh, sometimes you need to find new ways of working, and you have to be willing to kind of scrap your plan and start over again. Um, which is what we did at the beginning of at the big uh, sorry at the end of last year. Um, I literally took a whole month off and just you know stopped worrying about things and just and re envisioned my business. What would I want things to look at like now with my new life? And just giving myself the space to do that, I was able to create an entirely new business model. This is also where the rebrand came in because I realized that I didn't want to only focus on website designs. I really wanted to do more of what I was passionate about. So we rebranded. Um, I found some, you know, some, some new networks to be in and things have really taken back off. And now I feel like we're back at that sweet spot. Um, so, you know, those struggles are not always always permanent and it does not, it does not mean that you failed in your business. It just means that you might need to, to make some changes into how you're doing things and be open to those changes and know that, that you know, what you're doing is ultimately going to be right for you. So if I could describe my talents as superpowers, uh, that would be tough. I would say that I have two, I have two, uh, two big talents in my business or, or what I would call superpowers. The first one I just kind of mentioned, which is intuition. And this is only something that I've recently owned. Um, the key to my success in my previous businesses was really my intuition. I really had no training. I had no idea how to run a business. And it was it was being uh, being prepared to go for ideas that I felt I felt were right. I didn't know they were right. No one was telling me if it was right or wrong. I didn't have any kind of mentor at that time. Um, but it was that willingness to trust myself and my ideas that really allowed me to build, build those businesses because I was doing things that weren't necessarily conventional logic because uh, I really had no experience to base those things on. Um, so that intuition and, and feeling what was going to be the right direction or feeling um, the ideas that I wanted to go for was really, was really key for me. And I've developed that intuition over the last couple of years, especially working with clients. They might be, you know, telling me um, all of these different things about their business. And, uh, you know, we're, we're talking really big picture. And I almost like kind of navigate like very tactilely. Like I, I feel their words and I feel the right direction. I can find that through line in what they're saying and then reflect that back to them in a totally new way that just reframes everything. So I would say that's definitely one of my talents. Um, it also leads into the the being able to make decisions. So being able to feel which decision is right, being able to kind of go down that rabbit hole and using my intuition to see what, uh, what the outcome is going to be if I were to make one decision or the other. And that's also, um, that's also really helpful with my clients. Um, because sometimes what I'll do is, is if they're giving me all this information, I'll tell them, you know, if you were to make this decision, this is how it's going to turn out. If you make this decision, this is how it's going to turn out. Which one sounds better to you? Which one do you want? And it really, it really helps frame things for them and make it um, much easier for them to make decisions in their business. The second talent I would say is innovation. Um, and not necessarily that I come up with these like really innovative, crazy ideas that are totally outside of the box. But that if you give me an idea, I can just keep adding layers to it. So when we came up with that initial concept of Candyland, 
we just kept adding layers to it. I, I created all of these different places in the land of brand that we would visit. And um, we created all this different imagery and, and just, you know, the ideas just keep coming, which is why I really like themes. Um, so you'll notice in the land of brand that all of our sub brands of our products usually have a theme around them. Um, so we had the laboratory for about three years. And that was a, a laboratory uh, for mad brand scientists to come and experiment with their brands. And that theme was very much ingrained in that brand, in the language, in the imagery, in how we structured the calls, um, just all of those, those layers. And that all comes from innovation. And I love doing that with clients. And uh, you know, when, when a client comes to me with an idea or like this really out of the box way of doing things, I love finding innovative ways to deliver it and innovative ways to create an experience for their clients. Um, so that's that that would be those are my two superpowers and I guess if I were to to you know put a name to it it'd be like I would be the innovationator or something like that so what are my favorite business tools oh I have a lot of favorite business tools um, and I'll basically I'll put these in a list at the bottom of the the blog post uh, that has the the episode recap so Let's see, I have um, Camtasia. I use that for all of my video editing. I'm using it to record the podcast. Um, Camtasia is fantastic and it's not very expensive and it's very easy to use. Um, I use BusyCal, which is a plugin for my calendar that uh, manages to-dos, it shows me the weather. It basically shows like my entire business on one screen. Uh, Trello. I just uh, just recently started using that to keep checklists so that I didn't forget things. Um, you know, the mommy brain, you forget things very quickly. <laughs> um, so I'm using Trello because I can access it from all my devices and keep, keep my lists um, very organized and, and check things off as I go. Uh, what else? Um, Entreport, I use that for my CRM and sending out broadcasts and newsletters um, and automated, automate my marketing. Um, if you haven't heard of it, it's a lot like Infusionsoft, which I also used for four years um, and just recently made the switch. Um, what else? Uh, Evernote, I'm just starting to use that to kind of capture all of the um, ideas in my brain. Um, it makes it really easy to search them too. Um, what, uh, so technical stuff. Uh, for webinars, I use Webinar Jam for, or Instant Teleseminar. And the last one I'll give you is um, Uber Conference. This is something, again, I just started using recently and I love it. The premium version of Uber Conference is only, I think it's like $10 a month. And um, what it allows you to do is you have a phone number and you don't have a PIN number. So all that has to happen is people just call this phone number and they're added to the line. Or, and this is the brilliant part, you can have the conference line dial out to participants and then record automatically. So this is brilliant for client calls. And I literally use this for all of my client calls. Um, so I have it call both of us at the time of our appointment. That way neither of us are having to go find phone numbers. Um, it happens automatically. It records automatically. So if I'm not necessarily at my computer or I don't have an internet connection, like something is haywire, I know that the call is gonna be recorded automatically. And then it sends me the call summary that I can just forward to the client so that they have the recording instantly after our conversation. It's just like this this brilliant tool that I feel like is um, you know, just totally changed how I do my business. What is my guilty pleasure? I would have to say Disney. <laughs> I'm actually a little embarrassed to admit it, but even before I had a small one in the house, I would watch Disney if I had like a day off um, or you know, a night by myself, I would just eat, eat sushi and you know watch Disney Channel or watch a Little Mermaid or something like that. And that probably, you know, is what plays a lot into the imagery on the Land of Brand is that I just, I love, I love Disney. I love cartoons. I love the feel good atmosphere that it creates. I love the colors that they use. Um, it's just, uh, it's just something that I've always enjoyed since I was a little kid. And last question, if I was a fairy tale character, what would I be? I would be a jester. And not because I'm like super funny or anything, um, but because I feel like jesters are always, they're always in the room, they're always with the important people observing. And I'm definitely an observer. And then they come out with these like, these little quips or um, this kind of ironic way of looking at the world, which is definitely, definitely my sense of humor and, and how I interact in a group that I'm comfortable with. Um, I was also a gymnast uh, growing up, so you know that plays into being a jester. And 
Uh, you know, just a, again, a little, a little confession. I used to do a lot of role-playing games when I was, I was in high school and I was always a jester. My, my name was always Jester's Folly. Um, and so that's, that's really a big part of who I am. So I hope you have enjoyed my story and I promise you're going to enjoy, um, the stories of all the coaches that I'm interviewing and you'll, you'll learn a lot from their, their journeys that you can then apply to yours. If you enjoyed this episode, then please subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or you can even just subscribe on the blog. And we'll be posting episode recaps, the resources, and we'll be sending out reminders each time a new one is posted so that you can always, always stay up to date. Um, and I would love if you feel so inclined to uh, leave a review or shoot me an email with questions at holly at thelandofbrand.com. But reviews really help us because then we know what you're loving, what can be improved, and what you're really taking away from the episodes. And it also helps us promote the podcast to more people. So I hope I will see you next week and have an awesome day. Mm-hmm.